it's a beautiful morning in San Antonio. It's been raining all week. Now the sun's shining. It's cool. And I'm on my way to a pretty cool little event this morning, I think. Going out to a little car show at the uh, Club Humidor, which is uh, our local cigar shop. And so we'll be hanging around, talking about cars, smoking some cigars, I'm sure. And I'll try to get a little video of it, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about cigars. So on my way out there, I'm thinking about cigars. So I, I want to tell you a little story about how I got started smoking cigars. Several years ago, we would have a little group of motorcycle guys who would ride on Saturday mornings and we'd all meet out at a place called Rudy's uh, Barbecue Place. And we'd sit around and we'd drink coffee and most of these guys would smoke cigars and a lot of them were some of the top executives in San Antonio, pretty high powered people and lots of money. I always thought cigars were disgusting. I'd see people smoking a cigar and i just think, how in the world could they keep that nasty thing in their mouth? And then I'd also wonder how girlfriends or wives could even think about kissing that guy who had been chewing on that nasty uh, looking thing. So, you know, I smoked cigarettes, but cigars were never my thing. So one morning we rode out to this restaurant in New Braunfels and uh, we were sitting on a picnic table outside. And one of the guys who happened to be the publisher of the uh, local newspaper at the time <coughs> pulled out a little pocket uh, cigar holder and he offered me one he said you want one well I thought just to be polite that I would take it so I I took it and I, I smoked it and I was surprised it was really really good uh, and then, of course, it occurred to me that these guys smoke really, really good cigars, too. They, they can pay for them. And so that got me hooked on it, and I've enjoyed smoking them ever since. I don't smoke them a lot, but uh, for me, a cigar is more than just a cigar. Uh, I think a cigar is a relaxation device, and it's also a conversational device. You hardly ever see guys running around uh, frantically trying to work and smoke a cigar at the same time. When you watch somebody smoke a cigar, they're usually relaxed in a comfortable chair. They often have a nice drink to accompany the cigar. And a nice cigar will last about an hour or even more if you've got one of those big ones. But to really smoke and appreciate a cigar, you, you have to be you have to be ready to sit down and spend about an hour with it, and you have to do it slowly. That's another key. We all need to slow down and relax, and a cigar kind of forces you to slow down and be in the present moment. You take a little draw on that cigar, you feel the smoke coming into your mouth, you savor the the taste and the flavors, and then part of the enjoyment is watching that smoke leave your mouth. So we're going to be looking at some uh, Route 66 cigars, that's the sponsoring group this morning which is an appropriate cigar for a car show. So you should meet a lot of interesting people out there. When you combine car guys and cigar smokers, you've got some interesting personalities. <laughs> Girl. He didn't have a plane. 
I'm sitting here with uh, Dan Cruz, the owner of Dan Cruz Classics. Amen. Master auctioneer, car aficionado, and raconteur supreme. Amen. Great joke teller. <laughs> Great guy to talk politics with. One of the few people left in the world that you can actually have a civilized political discussion with. That's right. And so. I want to get him uh, to, to show off his auctioneering skills here, and he's going to auction off a Corvette sitting right here. All right, and it's a cherry Corvette, one of the finest in the world. Who gets 75000 I got 20. Thank you, sir. 25, 30, 35, and 40,000. Not a little bit 45. Now 50. At 50,000, I got now 55, sir. You pick it or bid and pick a winner. At 50, now $55,000. Anybody else? Sold, sold, sold. $50,000. That's Thank the you. way it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about that cigar you're smoking. This is an AKA called American Kick-Ass Cigars. Out of every cigar that you buy, they give a cigar to the military overseas. It's a great organization. They care about the military. They care about Americans. So do I. I hope you get a chance to smoke an AKA. Very good. So, how many of these cars have you sold, Dan, in your lifetime? I have sold probably close to, I would say, about four or five billion in collector cars. Uh, started when I was 18, 19 years old. Been all over the world selling collector cars. Broke the world's records in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Uh, the auction company then, the Cruz Classic Auction Company, was sold to eBay. And eBay owned it for five years. And during that time, I moved to Texas and have Dan Cruz Classics and do a sale uh, here in San Antonio, uh, set usually every year in March. Then I do uh, another one at the end of May over in Midland, and then the end of September, we do one in Austin, and then over Thanksgiving weekend, we do one in Houston, Texas. I love the collector car people. I love the auction business. It's truly an American free enterprise working at its best. So what's the, what's the most expensive car you've ever sold? <clears throat> I offered uh, and sold a Bugatti Royale for $13.5 And a little bit later, it was not the mid-80s, we sold one for $6.5 in the mid-80s. And then it was probably around in the 90s, the early 90s, we sold one. Today, a Bugatti Royale, there's only six in existence, probably would bring 30 to $40 million, maybe $50 million. Wow. Well, that's fascinating. It's been great talking with you here, and I'm going to put you on YouTube with your permission. You got my permission. God bless you. God bless America. <laughs> well, I own the Unstuff Humidor. That's my cigar shop. But uh, I love cars and motorcycles. So uh, what better thing than cigars, cars, and motorcycles? You're, you're sponsored by a particular cigar today, right? Acme's doing it today. Uh, who makes uh, this one here, the Acme Route 66. Awesome cigar. These guys are here today. Uh, 
and their regular label Acme. In fact, here's the Acme rep right now. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm Tom. Hi. So you're, you're the guy who sells these Acme cigars? Well, I can, yeah. Uh, they're great cigars, by the Thank way. You. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a little video here. I'm going to put it on YouTube if, with your permission. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. i got to get your permission, you know, on, on camera. So you won't sue yeah, me. I got my permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he says it's good, it's good for us. Yeah. yeah. He's the guy that did that's cool. I love that video you did. Yeah, well, thank that you. was awesome. Yeah, I just popped the thing up, handheld. And... Well, here's coming up. There's my buddy Jay. He's the one who actually blended the cigars and stuff. Right. Jay, you're on the least tobaccos made from all different countries. Yeah. Honduras, Dominican Republic. It's really a good cigar. I was surprised. Well, here's the Club Humidor van. We call it a smoking van. Hello. outside. A uh, liquor dispenser, PlayStation 3, satellite dish, uh, Apple TV, Wi Fi. Uh, espresso machine. Who did, who did the custom job? A uh, company in Florida. I don't know what they're called. But, uh, it's been across the country. I had to get your permission to put you on YouTube. Oh, of course. Yes, you can. Yeah. I got to get that on tape so you won't sue me. I, I am becoming a lawyer, so. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's good. Wow. This little shot here is from my son Patrick who, who placed the bassoon for the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra and I just met this nice young lady her name is Samantha and found out that she's a coloratura soprano. Yes, that is my and principal. I want you to tell Patrick what you just told me about the bassoon because he doesn't hear this very often. Oh, well, he should because as a double major with composing, one of my favorite instruments of all time to write for is specifically bassoon because there's so much you can do with the bassoon. The versatility in, in timbre and in actual range, like it's just such a gorgeous instrument and I want to hear it more often, so more people need to score. So how do you combine? Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to hear one of the greatest singers in the world, Samantha, nicknamed Sam, one of the most beautiful voices God has ever made. Here she is, Samantha. Yes. I think you could auction off a little performance here for <laughs> one million 
one million two hundred fifty thousand, one million five, one million five hundred thousand dollars, and anything else. So, one million two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> It's worth a lot more. That's it.